Welcome to a stationer's coding video of a starter phase change cooling system for Vulcan. And by starter, I mean a very simplistic system that can be set up rather quickly just to get basic cooling enabled. I have a more complicated systems I've been working on, but it requires a lot more components. So we're going to focus on a very simple system to get going. And then uh, once you have that going, you can always work your way up. So all we have is an active vent, um, some piping, a one-way valve going out, cowl, condensation valve. So basically we get the pressure up, we get liquid, liquids flow into this section. It's, we want to keep this small, get the pressure up. And then, because even though liquids come in here, it'll immediately turn to a gas if there's not enough pressure. So once the pressure builds back up again, it converts back to a liquid. And now liquids can flow through the expansion valve, puts it back into a gaseous form, and we store it in this tank. We do not want to compress this gas. We want to keep it um, at a low pressure, under four, under four megapascals. We do not want to liquefy this stuff. And this pipe right here, you can connect it to the back end of an air conditioning unit. And now you have very basic AC running with not too many components. It does require a chip and there is a uh, sensor for reading outside temperature. I'm actually sharing the sensor over here. So imagine the sensor outside stuck somewhere over here. And all this equipment can be stored outdoors without a problem. Actually, you have to store this one outdoors. So let's just start it up. And this chip is using this component and the vent kicks on. Let's see what's going on here. The pressure is building. Now, because you have a one-way valve here, the active vent can bring in gas faster than the one-way valve can pass it. So we can bring the pressure up. But once the pressure has a certain uh, value, we turn off the active vent. So effectively, the active vent is turning on and off to maintain the pressure between six to seven megapascals. The advantage of, of having the gas pass through, it helps keep the pipe cool. As the gas compresses and turns to liquid, it heats up the gas. So by passing the gas through, we help keep it cool naturally without having to put radiators on here. And we have the liquid that passes in here. I just see it's mostly gas, a little bit of liquid. And that little bit of liquid passes over this tank here. And it's building up. So it's not a huge amount. We already have that quick little time. We have, uh, you know, 150 moles now of gas. And more importantly, it's only, you know, 51 Celsius. Now the gas will go up a little higher, but the key is this is a lot better than using atmosphere gas for AC unit. And more importantly, once you have it in here, you can run the AC all day, all night because of the, uh, once you store it here, you have that. Now, if you put this on an AC unit attached to there, it will heat up, heat up, heat up. So apparently, occasionally you need to manually dump this gas out to the atmosphere and then load in new gas. Now that can be automated, obviously, but that requires more components. This is designed to be something simple, quick to put into a uh, scenario specifically a brutal scenario. We don't have a lot of time just to get basic AC running. It's starting to get warmer outside and the system shut down automatically, which is by design. And then during the next, but we now have all this gas stored up here. And this liquid is insulated pipe, so it won't increase temperature. Now, as I said, the interesting aspect with phase change cooling or phase change heating is it requires a lot of elements to do well. A lot of automation, a lot of pieces, a lot of sensors. And I said for very early in the game, that's a bit much to put in. So let's look at the coding. So beginning we have some constants. So we have the maximum world temperature, which is the system runs at 130 or below. If it's outside, it's higher, it stops. Here we have the maximum gas pressure. Now, if we look 
for the active vent going out, this is the output gas pressure. So from an active vent, you can read this pressure and temperature here. So that's what I'm reading. So I don't want that over 7,000 or seven megapascals. And the maximum tank pressure, that big insulated tank on the, on the far left, we will keep that at four megapascals. If it goes higher, then we start hitting the, the pressure range where the pollutants will go back into a liquid form. And we don't want that happening in a set of gas pipes. We have our device ports. We have the sensor, which is in the world environment. Have a uh, act or active vent. We turn on and off, and the gas tank, which we store the gas. Initialization. The first thing we're going ahead do is, of course, turn everything off, and we set the mode to one, which will bring gas into the front of the active vent. Following our main loop, we yield. This is important. Don't forget your yields. The first check we do is we load the temperature outside. If it's greater than our limit, we turn the vent off, which basically means we drop down here, turn the vent off, go back to main. And that's right now it's hot outside, so it's basically going to main, checking, too hot, turn off, back to main, around and around it goes. Then we check to make sure the pressure coming out of the active vent is not too high. So we read the active vent, pressure output. If it's too high, we turn the vent off, it goes again. Then we check the tank pressure, load the tank pressure. If it's higher than the tank pressure, we turn it off. If we pass all these rule checks, we turn the vent on, go back to main, reapply the checks. And that's it for this. So that should be uh, hopefully pretty straightforward. And right now it says not running. And of course, our insulated, we have this nice gas. And it said, that's quite a bit, 258 moles. And we started it not f at, at exactly beginning of the day. So we're getting maybe 300 moles of reasonably cool air uh, every night in a started condition. That's more than sufficient to keep a small hydroponic room um, cool and deal with your waste tank. And then later on, there'll be a future video where more advanced things will happen. All right, that's it for this video. Until next time, see ya.